and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I wanna to talk to you about shoes and specifically what type of shoes that you need for lifting under different types of lifting circumstances versus running and what you should look for in a training shoe because it seems to be something that really holds a lot of people back or confuses them or honestly gets a lot of misinformation in the fitness industry, but what doesn't? So something that I'm asked a lot is what kind of shoe that you do need for lifting. And so really when you're starting getting training in the gym and you're starting to lift and you have a million and one things that seem to be obstacles in your way, I wanna start by saying that whenever shoe you own and have available to you is the best shoe for you in that time. Yes, the Reggie pros are cons and a lot of people tend to lift in running shoes and that might not be as ideal, but typically I just want you to get in the gym and start loading your muscles however you can. And so using what you have available to you is going to be a great way to reduce that obstacle and barrier so you're not making more of a challenge for yourself to get in the gym, get training and get active. Now, and your second best option for that is if you're training for free at a home gym, a gym that you feel is clean and comfortable with is training barefoot. Yes, you could train barefoot for things like squats, deadlifts, um, overhead pressing if you feel like your shoes are too wobbly or you have too much of a thick base on them, especially those thicker running shoes like your Hoka's um, or some, maybe some of your higher stack ultras, things like that, those really cushiony shoes where you might not feel like you have a stability in them and you're wobbling around, you could train barefoot and take that off and do your movements in them. But otherwise, the best shoe that you want for lifting or resistance training in the gym is going to probably be a flat sole trainer. Now, you do not have to go to Nike or Noble um, or any other Reebok, any of the common brands, those are probably three of the most common brands for this, is going to be Nike Metcons, Reeboks trainers, and Noble for these trainers specifically. They tend to be a little bit more crossfitting, but they are great shoes, they're flat soled. Um, so when you're, you're lifting, your foot is flat against the floor. Um, but you can also lift in a van or a Converse shoe as well. So again, don't you don't need to go riding to get super, super fancy shoes, but I lifted in Converse and vans for years. I still do sometimes, but otherwise, if you're looking for a specific training shoe, what you're looking for and what all those shoes have in common is that band Converse, Nike Metcon, Reebok Metcon type training shoes, Nobles are going to be this flat sole. So this might look a little elevated, but when my foot is inside the shoe, it's pretty much completely fat other than this little bit of base and it has a very solid hard base. And that is important. So we're not looking for that thick rubberized sole that we're seeing in our conventional running shoe, um, but rather something that's flat and hard on the base so that we can push our foot into the ground and has a stiff for base for us to drive our feet into. So we don't want force absorption during lifting like we want with running and that's why we have that thicker sole, but rather we want to be able to have our force to drive in or help drive us up into our barbell, whichever way we're moving. So we want that thick flat place that will also allow us to be a little bit more stable on the floor. Um, the word stability gets thrown around a lot can be kind of gimmicky but essentially you're just going to not feel off balance if you are wearing a rounded or a curved running shoe that's going to be back and forth or up or down so really something with just a simple flat sole like this is going to be perfect for that now if you want to get more serious in lifting like powerlifting olympic weightlifting uh, more specific in your weightlifting endeavors and or you just struggle with squat mobility or you need a little bit of a boost with improving your poor calf range of motion in your training, you can do a squat shoe. So this is gonna be a little bit different than the flat sole trainer where this has this little bit of a heel here, but I wanna remind you and keep in mind, this is still a pretty hard base hard flat sole base with just a little bit of that heel and elevation. And so when you put your foot in, it's hard and flat and you still have that firm base to drive into and use while training. Um, but it has a little bit of a heel lift and this just allows you basically to decrease the amount of depth and range of motion that you have to require on your ankle and your calf there in that, that joint position. You would think I would be able to say those words off the top of my head with the PhD in exercise physiology, but gosh dang it, I'm on camera. So basically you just aren't requiring as much dorsiflexion, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. You aren't requiring as much of dorsiflexion. So essentially your calf and ankle do not have to bend as much. And if you've ever tried to do full depth squats and you struggle with your range of motion, you'll notice that your heels will start to lift off the ground a little bit and it might be harder for you to do so. And then by lifting in a shoe like this, it's a little bit of a lift and allows you to simply increase that or not have as much of a demand on that. And some people find it easier to lift it. Otherwise, there's just maybe a slight advantage of doing that. Um, and people love these for Olympic weightlifting, CrossFit, and or any type of lifting where you're having to do anything that results in a squat position at the bottom. So back squats, power cleans, full cleans, power snatches, snatches, all of the above. Anything that is kind of doing more of that squat based pattern movement, you're going to use these, but you could squat in these. Um, bench knees and you could deadlift in these if you wanted to. Typically people don't, you usually have a flat foot, but more power to you. You probably won't hurt yourself doing so. 
And last but not least, we have just your typical running shoe. And so a running shoe or a Metcon like this can be used for any general conditioning. So if you're just doing HIIT, cardio, group fitness, circuit tape classes, the more it gets closer on that weight loading spectrum, I'm gonna to lean towards re recommending a Metcon or a thinner sole running shoe. But anything that's gonna be more running based, this is gonna be based on preference, your foot. I highly recommend just consulting with some guy who works at your local running store or something like that. But you're going to have more of this thick sole. Now this is a no cool runner and I don't typically run in this. I use this more for general gym wear and conditioning, but it's the same premise as you have this thick sole of the running shoe here that's going to absorb more force as you're producing that pound for pound on your foot. And sometimes these are thick, sometimes they're rounded, sometimes they're flatter and stacked. It just depends on the shoe style. But essentially this is less of a stable base because it's more of a firm, squishy pad than a hard sole like you're gonna have with this type of shoe. So basically you want this for your running, your cardio or whatever that you're doing personally day to day, maybe a walking shoe, that is great and fine. But if you find that you're getting more serious in your weight training and that you need something that has a little bit more of a, you know, flat sole or stable sole, you can switch to something like this, or a, like I said, a Converse shoe or a, or a van, but when we're running, we want these types of shoes. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that you're gonna get hurt or demonize this type of shoe for lifting. Again, I want you to lift with what you can, but this would be great to move from if you're starting with this into something with a flatter sole like this. And typically, you never have to advance into a shoe like this unless you really want to. Personally, I never lifted in a heel elevated shoe until like the last year or a half maybe. Um, I started even Olympic weightlifting and lifted it in a, I lifted it in a Metcon for my first year. So don't add more cost to your fitness. Don't make things more expensive. Don't add more barriers of entry. Just get started if that's with this or your bare foot, you're perfectly fine as long as you're getting in the gym and you're loading your tissues and your bodies. Over time, for most of you, a flat sole shoe is what I'm gonna recommend and it can be as cheap or as expensive as you want it to be, but you don't need to overthink it. So I hope you found this helpful. You now you know what shoes to get. Shoes, let's get some shoes. And if you don't know that reference, then I'm too old for you and you should leave my channel. I'm just kidding, stay here and subscribe. Hopefully that was helpful and maybe eases your worries about the perfect shoe to lift in. There's no perfect shoe, just like running, lifting, it's all gonna depend on what you need out of a shoe what you prefer. Some people love Metcon, some people hate them. Some people love Reeboks. I can't stand the way the tongue rides on my heels. I haven't tried Nobles lifters. Some people love those. It really just depends on what works for you. So try a few, ask around, try in a shoot, few at shop for trying them if you need, but figure out what works best for you. Um, yeah. So if you found this helpful, let me know in the comments what shoe you love to lift in. I personally love my Nike Metcon, so I had to choose one shoe for the rest of my life to work out in. And if you found this helpful, make sure you subscribe and catch us back in the next video.